Okay, so this is a video about using NOAA's high split model and how to convert what you get from that into a Google Earth map. NOAA's high split model is uh, a model that they've come up with to predict how uh, particles move in a wind field. They use it for pollution, for smoke, pollen, dust, volcanic ash, basically anything like that that's a particle, and they can track how it's going to move uh, long distances. And uh, fortunately for us, a balloon <clears throat> in the jet stream is basically a big particle in a wind field as it applies to the jet stream. So um, they've actually come up with a, a little subset of their model that lets you do balloon calculations um, for, for pico balloons, for floater balloons that travel long term. Um, obviously, I don't think this would work that great for weather balloons that burst and come back down. Um, but it works well for pico balloons and for those of you who are not familiar a pico balloon is an amateur radio powered balloon and it can be <clears throat> a small mile or party balloon or specialized ones uh, like the SBS 12 or SBS 13 from scientific balloon solutions and the point of that is the payload is very tiny uh, the one that we plan to launch is about 12 grams. It's very, very lightweight. Uh, it does not burst. It reaches a float altitude where <clears throat> it just becomes neutrally buoyant because it doesn't have enough lift to get any higher. And then it kind of hangs out at that altitude and hopefully cruises for a very long distance. Some of them can even go around the world, uh, sometimes multiple times. So... When you launch one of those kind of balloons, you want to know, or you don't need to know, but it's kind of helpful, it's kind of fun to see uh, where do we think it's going to go. So uh, there are fortunately, like I said, Noah's high split model is a good way to run that prediction. So I'm going to do that for you. Uh, I'm going to show you what you get, and I'm going to show you how to convert the text result into... A Google Earth map. So we start out, and if you're watching this on YouTube, which you should be, uh, the links for the sites that I'm using here will be in the description. So we'll start with NOAA's high split model, their balloon optimization calculation, and this looks good. Don't need to do anything here. We go down to the bottom. As you can see, that's that's filled in for me. Um, You'll need to find your coordinates for your launch location. Um, that's good for mine. So we'll hit next. <clears throat> Meteorological file. Let it, let it go. It usually defaults to what it is right now or the most relevant one for right now. We hit next. Now here's the model run details. A lot of this you can leave alone. Trajectory, direction, forward. Um, look, this is this is helpful. So here's the current time, 1722. So month and date are okay. And remember, this is in UTC. Um, current time is 1722 UTC. So either 17 or 18 will work. It's not that bad. Um, so I'll make it 18. Total run time. Now here's what I run into. 84 hours seems to be the maximum. It will not run further than 84 hours out. So it'll go it'll give us <clears throat> basically a a whole trajectory up until 84 hours so we can see where it would be 84 hours from now, which is a good starting point. Um and start longitude and latitude that should be filled in. Level 1 height and level 2 height. What I usually do is level 1 height is ground level at my launch altitude. 
Level two height is my cruising altitude. That's the way I usually, usually do it. And make sure to check over here, meters AMSL, above mean sea level, not above ground level. Um, <clears throat> splitting interval, that's another one. You can go less, um, but I found I can't do 84 hours if I go less. So it's a little confusing, it's a little strange. <clears throat> because that seems to be a, a pretty long splitting interval between points because uh, it's not going to take 12 hours to get the cruising altitude, but it'll still at least give us something to look at. Um, plot resolution. <clears throat> because of what I'm going to show you today, plot resolution doesn't need to be very high at all. Um, I can actually bump that to 72. Um, if you wanted a nice graphics file, it's going to give us a file to look at. We'll see. It's going to give us a, a GIF image that you could save. If you wanted that to be really nice and high quality, you could crank that up to 300 dpi dots per inch. But for what we're doing, we're not even going to touch that GIF file. So let it go long, uh, low resolution. We can let all of this alone. Literally, there's not much we need to touch here. Um, request trajectory. And it's going to say there's no graphics file available yet. That's fine. You have to sit there and wait for a few seconds. And then it'll come up with some things for us. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> now, if we happen to look... Let's open this in a new tab and look at the GIF. It's going to give us All right. Well, that's kind of interesting. Blocked. Um There we go. <laughs> didn't like me opening a new tab. Okay. See if we didn't touch it, what we got, we would get multiple trajectories. It kind of runs the equation, I guess, multiple iterations of the equation with various parameters and things um, and that's not helpful to us too much if, unless you just want the really general idea of where your balloon might go um, so we're not done yet if you see the first option there is determine nearest trajectory to chosen location we will hit that balloon okay so now we scroll down and make sure we want this first radio button and it's already filled in for me. These should get a beat again. These should be your coordinates for your launch location. And then we hit next. Now there's our little low resolution GIF since I chose 72 DPI. It doesn't, we're not going to use this image, but there you get an idea of what it should look like. And I guess you could keep that up if you wanted to. And make sure that uh, your Google Earth file at the end of this looks like this. And if it doesn't, you know you did something wrong. So scroll down past this image. And we have text file of optimized trajectory endpoints. Now, <clears throat> this is where we're starting to do stuff with the data. What I do, let me move this over a little bit. Starting with this line right here that says pressure, I copy the whole way down to the bottom. Copy. And I have a text file here on my desktop, all ready to go. Now, control V, drop it in there. Now we need to start manipulating this to make it usable and readable. <clears throat> the first thing we want to do we have this one pressure line. Select it, hit delete, hit delete again, so that your first line is actually your first line of data. Now, select the first space. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy. I'm gonna hit Control H to do a find and replace. We wanna find this space, make sure find what is a space. So go in there, hit the space bar. Replace with, put a comma in there and say replace all boom see what we did here now we have basically a comma separated values file except we don't yet we need to save it as one 
So save as high split. See, because that was the name of my original file. If it comes up as like new text document, because that's what you have, then change the name. Now this is critical. There's two things we need to do here. First of all, save as type. If I just hit that, it would save it as a text document. We don't want a text document. Say so we hit the drop down and do all files. And in our file name, since we're not going to save it as a .txt file, we're going to save it as a .csv. That's a comma separated values file. So now we have, see, there's our new CSV file. Let's open it, and we're still not done. Um, I'm using OpenOffice Calc, which is a free version. OpenOffice is like free version of Microsoft Office. So I'm using a free version of Excel, basically. So your options may look a little different, but I'm sure they're close enough where you can understand what we're doing here, and you can find them in Office if that's what you're using. We want to check a button that says merge delimiters because if you remember in our text file there were a ton of commas between each of the values so we don't want each of the commas you know we don't want 50 different columns in this file because we have so many commas so we merge delimiters and each of those commas it's just gonna if they're lumped together it's just gonna be one field and then we hit OK now we have beginnings of our table. We have our table. We're not done with it. We have too much information here for what we really need. We just need the coordinates. And as you can see, the coordinates are in K and L. So what we're going to do, select at the top J through A. Select all the columns. Right click delete the columns. We don't need those columns. We also don't need columns C and D, so we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to select row 1 and insert a row. Now I'm going to show you a tool called GPS Visualizer and it's really cool. Basically it convert, can convert almost any format in of, of uh, location data into almost any other format so um, it but it needs to know uh, the headings it needs to know what it's looking at so we're gonna we inserted the row here column a what I do we're gonna put latitude in column a we're gonna put longitude in column B and we're just gonna hit control s and save that file now the file is actually done so we can close this and we're going to go to GPS Visualizer again the links for these uh, sites that I'm using is in the description and you get upload a GPS file choose file we're going to find our high split find your high split CSV file do not find your text file that you started with if it's still there um, of course, actually, if you did it the way I just showed you, you didn't save that text file, so that's good. Don't, you know, make sure you get your CSV. Double click. Choose an output format, drop down box. We want to go to Google Earth and hit map it. And it's crunching that. Now, see this right here, this long name? That's your file. So if your browser is different, basically we're going to save this. I'm clicking it here in Chrome. And it's going to save this file. It saved it in my download folder, so let me just find it and drop it to the desktop. Now, we don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do this to show it to you. Let's open it up and look at it. just to double check and see what we got. It should look like we want it to. I don't anticipate any problems, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like in Google Earth. And here we go. Oh. 
All right. Now, let's spin the view. Zoom out a little bit. Look at that. There's my, that's my uh, launch location. There's where it'll be in 48 or in 84 hours if I were to launch right now. Now, the other thing to do is, okay, no, we just discard. Um, I'm not taking you through the steps to create a new Google map, but it's pretty easy to do. I'm sure you can do it if you go to Google Maps. I already have an existing one. And it's your places. W4FWD Pico Balloon. Open it in my maps so you can close the other tab. Let me move this browser window over. Get rid of that. Now I have already have a prediction in there, so I need to delete that layer. Now, see it says untitled layer and it has the import button or import link. Now I can drop my Google Earth file in there. And look at that. We've got we've got our file in there and we've got the point and it looks right. Now, did you notice when it said you can drop a file in there, it said CSV. And if you remember earlier, we created a CSV. But I didn't drop, I went through the extra steps and converted it. Why did I do that? Um, let me show you. Let's delete that layer. And I'm not sure why it does it this way, but if we were to drop our CSV without going to GPS visualizer and converting it. See, yeah, it just, it does it this way. I don't know, it wants me to choose a, and then it just shows our trajectory is a bunch of points, not, not a bunch, not, not a line. It shows it as all points and I didn't like that. So that's why we, that's why we went to GPS visualizer and converted the file to uh, a Google Earth file. It made it that made it into a line instead of instead of a bunch of points. And then, obviously, once you have it in there, you can edit that and change the color and thickness and all that stuff. But that's your current trajectory and where it would be in 84 hours if you were to launch it right now. And I hope you enjoyed it and that uh, if you found this helpful, uh, please subscribe and share the video. Thank you.